and able to grab and ride it out. Right now we step up with a veteran in a sport where the average age is 15 to 20. Mike Jones is 34 years old. He's been nominated Entertainer of the Year for Pace Motorsports, and he's won over 100 jumping contests. And one thing to watch, you saw him get a little loose on the landing there when Mike Jones, he is a heavyweight. Watch the bike move around. He just basically forces and pushes the bike around in the air just because he has such weight and strength on his side. A little cliffhanger, no footer. Jones has been competing since 1972. He has such experience on his side, almost casing the jump right there. Lands a little bit on the back side. And a big lazy boy getting all the way back on the bike. It's something he's known for there, big Superman. Does the fender grab and lands the no-hander, rides it all the way out. So important when you land those no-handers, you don't hesitate, you land with confidence and you ride it all the way out. And Jones doing just that. Awesome run so far. See a little repetition out of Jones. Mixing up with a little hip, getting lost on the side of the course. And Jones, a score of 87.5. I tell you, Mike Jones is the George Foreman of freestyle motocross. Look at the way he muscles the bike around on this Superman. Literally moves the bike where he wants. Remember, that's 220 to 25 pounds right there. But then on the cliffhanger to no footer, watch the feet. Then mixes it up, feet go out, lands cleanly. They call him the Tomcat. It is none other than Tommy Flowers. He was riding BMX bikes back in the day until he met Mike Craig, a pro rider, along with his dad. They got him into motocross, and since then, he's been at the top of this sport, especially freestyle motocross. Solid with the look back, knack knack off out of the gate. Little no hander there. Something to watch for with Tommy Flowers the extensions on all his tricks. He truly punctuates whatever he's trying to do on the bike. On a style factor, that means so much to the judges. And right there, textbook style Superman air gets all the way back, bio parallel with the bike. That is such a good example of what we're starting to see in the sport of freestyle motocross. So many variations, each rider taking their own signature on tricks. And Clower is definitely one of the more innovative riders. Once again, Clowers getting a little loose on the side. Very innovative all the way through this run. We haven't seen repetition. Awesome extension. Did you see Clowers completely vertical on the heart attack? Textbook style. One of the most thought out runs we've seen so far. And that is going to finish.
finish it up for Tommy Flowers. The score of 91.5. Can always count on Clowers coming in with a little authority on his tricks, but he always signs it with a little signature style right there all the way through the run. We didn't see any repetition, and then he always pulls out the stock tricks, the things like the whippets, the nothings, and right here, Clowers doing it, getting so sideways on that, but lands cleanly all the way through. The infamous Brian Deegan gets his armor ready for his first run. Metal Militia is a group of boys that it's like a long time ago we were over the corporate ways. Metal Militia is the hardcore motocross riders that don't really care what anyone thinks. We're just going to do what we want. I'm out there to take the win at all costs. Metal Militia want ad, must love Ozzy, bite the head off bats, and oh, you have to have a marketing degree also. <laughs> Brian Deegan, if you can believe it, his dad is a school superintendent, his mom a teacher, but he's one of the best riders in the sport of freestyle motocross. Last year's silver medalist. The reason he's so good is he follows a prescribed way of hitting all the jumps. He knows exactly what he's going to do before he hits the course. Pat Deegan lives in a nice gated community, safe from all the vagabonds out there in the world, and he's also the CEO of Militia Industries. It's funny, Deegan was very frustrated with the Supercross corporate world, went on his own, and at events like these, you see so much of his products. He's kind of like an entrepreneur with amazing riding skills. Isn't it ironic? Don't you think? Huge yes. Indian air, but like we said, he backs it up with solid riding. There is some solid riding, busting out the Cordova. Gotta look out for scoliosis after that trick. Clearing 65 feet, lands with a no-hander. Deegan is starting to put together one of the, the most solid runs we've seen so far here today. Well, remember, Pat, he is on an absolute mission. Last year, silver medal, couldn't quite be thrown. The reigning champion at that point was Travis Pastrana. He's out at a Supercross event, can't be here, so we're gonna have to consider Deegan one of the favorites to win. Beginning to look like Deegan can do it. He is extending all his tricks and he's throwing them back to back. And that is going to do it for Brian Deegan's first run. He really covered all the bases, like he, he pointed certainly out. He did. He certainly did. Here's the Cordova. It's a staple of freestyle motocross tricks. He added that and a bunch more of exciting moves in his run. Deegan's first run, the highest of the day so far, a 93.50. Right now, it's Kenny Bartram up on deck. You hear a lot of hype between the good and evil in freestyle motocross. He definitely sits on the good side. This guy listens to country music. He's like a good old boy from Oklahoma. Kenny Barton, good friends with Travis Pastrana, who won gold in this event last year. Some of his tricks resemble Travis's as well. There you go, nice Indian Air Sea Grab. If you listen, you can hear it winding out. He's getting hit right now. Yeah! Look at that, the lazy boy all the way over. Oh, yeah! Pulling up double saran wrap. He is pulling out some seriously hard tricks. Just 
break it down once again. Each rider gets two runs, two minutes each. It's a combined score that's going to decide if they get the gold medal. They have eight jumps they're dealing with here and ten different hits. That being just the hips, the sides of the ramps they can play with. They're definitely judged on the creativity, the way they use the course. Yes, squeezing in two heel quickers. He's now maximizing his air time. He's squeezing in as many tricks as possible. Yes. Oh my goodness. No way. Over the 90 footer. Did that you see? was a double grab, like heart attack with Superman secret. Completely stretched, like this is Stretch Armstrong. A point from the seven. <laughs> what I was screaming about. Look, double grab, stretches himself out. Awesome, comes right back down, perfect. He's actually got holes cut in the side of his bike so he could grab easier. Bartram score a 93.50. Right now he is tied with Brian Deegan, our last rider of the round. It is none other than Mike Metzger. This guy is so responsible for where freestyle motocross is now. He was one of the first riders ever featured in the mainstream motocross publications. Probably one of the first lunatics to start taking his hands and feet off it. He's a BMX fan. He really started riding the BMX bikes, and that's how he started experimenting with all those tricks. And when I say lunatic hat, I mean that in the nicest possible way. Something to look for when you watch Mike Metzger ride. It's almost like he feels his way through the course. A lot of these riders kind of choreograph, meditate what they're going to do, but he does not telegraph whatsoever what he's going to do. Pat, I like that. It's kind of like the Luke Skywalker scene where he's in a linear fall, you know, with the, the blast shields on. However, that's exactly what he's doing. He is just ad living, and look at how exciting he is. Watch. Look at that. Swing like no footer. Can't hand no footer. Mike Metzger absent from the gravity games just a month prior for his ACL. He is definitely one of those riders who has been riddled with injuries throughout his career. Well, that's because he does not know any speed except fast. Whoa, right Whoa. there, a little hesitation on the hill flicker. Something else I want to point out about Metzger's riding is he loves to hold tricks for as long as he possibly can. Just getting to this contest, Metzger threw his two pit bulls, his new wife, into a car and drove from California all the way to Providence, Rhode Island. Well, take it out! Oh. We got the cameraman! You know, actually, if you hit the cameraman, you get more points. But you know what? That's what I'm talking about, at lift. The jump was in his way, so he hit it. An explosive and creative run, but there was hesitation for Metzger. Look at this. Keep your eyes on his feet. He lifts him up to try and do something, but it's like, ah, oh, man, maybe not. Now look, does the heel clicker. That's how much air and how much time these guys have. Mike Metzger's first run, a score of 91. He is going to have to improve if he plans to catch Deegan. But not just Deegan, Kenny Bartram. He is tied with Deegan in first place. In third place, we have another tie with Flowers and Vines. Still looming in the air, though, is the question, can a backflip be done on a motorcycle? Kerry Hart's last run, next. Kerry Hart, Las Vegas. Freestyle motocross. Me and my dad kind of grew up together, you know. Me and my mom wasn't around, so me and my dad was a 23-year-old kid stuck with a little kid himself. Harry rode a motorcycle before he rode a bicycle. Uh, I bought him his first motorcycle when he was three. Bought him a bicycle when he was four. Didn't want nothing to do with that because he had to pedal it, you know. So the bicycle went in the garage and the motorcycle went out every weekend. I've always had access to equipment. Uh, I run a construction company in Vegas, so. We went out and built a motocross track right in our front yard, basically. My dad 
has been involved with my riding since like, you know, the day I put my leg on my bike for the first time and as I grew up he was always there at every local race, you know, sweeping my gate for me. It's the only thing that we, we have really bonded on because I've always worked construction. Uh, he's either been in school and when he's not in school and I'm not working, we're out playing in the dirt. Back in the day we had some choices to make. Let's see, we want to go to a race this weekend or pay the gas bill, so a lot of times we take cold showers. It's kind of come for full circle, so now that I'm not racing no more, I'm doing the freestyle thing, but my dad's builds courses for us. I mean, my dad's involved again in the sport, which I mean, that's the greatest thing for me because I mean, I love having my dad around. And there's not too many sports you can, you know, a father and son can do that. And you know, I'm definitely lucky to have that bond with my dad. I'm still watching, he's still my little boy. I don't care how old he is, he'll be my little boy forever. Uh, being able to see my son do what he does and to come out and be a part of it, I would trade it for nothing. We are upon a moment that both Tom and Carrie Hart have anxiously been awaiting. Carrie's last and final chance here today in Providence. The energy has reached epic proportions. Everyone out here knows the impact this will have on the sport of freestyle motocross if Carrie Hart pulls off a back flip. Right now, let's go over to the deck. Pat, Carrie Hart just told me he's going to attempt a back flip. We'll have to wait and see what happens. Back to you. And Kevin, Thanks, this Jamie. is what we were talking about. Right now, he has decided, for the most part, to throw away his second run. You can see him eyeing the jump. Pat, I have to tell you, there's a lot of apprehension from a lot of people as well. We are not sure this can be done. It's no joke. He can be seriously injured. That bike is 220 pounds. People are on pins and needles right now. He's coming for a second pass. No, Kerry Hart, second time around. He is not going to go for the back flip, at least not yet. Pat, going through his mind right now has got to be a million things. This is unbelievable tension. here back of me, everybody knew I could do it. And I just yanked hard and I saw the landing going that way underneath me, out the flat, but I pulled it. 
What was the feeling? What was going through your mind as you were in the air? It's unbelievable. It's like, I thought it was going to be like on a bicycle. Uh -uh. I was cool. I don't know how I was, but I felt high. That was awesome, Carrie. Congratulations. History in the making. Oh, yeah. Back to you guys. Here it is again. Keep your eyes on Carrie Hart. He comes up to the jump right before it. He just guns the throttle, puts his body back, and lets the ramp flip him. When you jump a motorcycle, what you're doing is you're fighting against this very thing. He just lets nature take its course, lets the loop happen. An unbelievable moment. Unthinkable, impossible, not for Carrie Hart. Only he knows the feeling right now. Somehow, some way, we're gonna have to get it together. Believe it or not, there is still more riding. An incredible day for Carrie Hart, but even more incredible for Kenny Bartram right now, tied with Brian Deegan in first place with a score of 93.5. He looks to improve. Good extension with the Indian Air Sea Grab last year. Kenny Bartram paired up with Travis Pastrana. They rode the doubles, took home the gold medal. Oh, Kenny Bartram goes down. Just trying to pin it in the corner. Good thing to point out about Kenny Bartram. He rides a 125. You can hear it almost fully pinned there in the corners. Most of the other riders ride a 250, a much stronger bike. Kenny Bartram is one of those guys who has the ability but has problems with inconsistency. Good extension, once again, with the recliner there, Lazy Boy pulling it all.